welcome back to the awarded E60, presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance. In the coming weeks, millions of people will pack NFL stadiums. Most will have an idea of their heritage, where or who they came from. But for one man, this part of his life has been a large blank. You're about to see one of the more remarkable stories we've ever told on E60. So take a deep breath and come along now on an unforgettable journey. It's a story told by Sarah Spain. You've heard stories before of people searching for their roots, but never one like this. This is the untold journey of Dylan McCullough and the search for his identity. between when he was there and when he was gone? Just kind of financially. I mean, my mom was really, she's doing the best she could, you know, but I mean, we didn't have a phone. A lot of times the electric was off, the utilities were off. My mom was in a couple of longer term relationships. You know, guys, you know, rather be substances or violence, you know, just, you know, it's like domestic stuff with my mom and I had to sit there and deal with that or try to, Make heads or tails of that stuff was ridiculous. Dylan and I played a lot of football. The guys, the older guys my age, would love to play with him because he was fun to watch. They would laugh when they tackled him because he was so serious about going straight forward. I could kind of take my anger and frustrations out. You didn't think about the electric is off, you know. By 1991, Dylan was 18. As a senior at Campbell Memorial High School, he ran for nearly 1,500 yards. Dylan McCullough with many honors after the season this year. First team on the Honey Valley Conference. Good luck to you in the future. We tried to recruit Dylan McCullough to Youngstown State very hard. He was always doing the right things. He was a guy that could be a leader. He would have been a steal for us. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting a, probably a handful of offers from right there locally, Youngstown State, Akron, Kent. I'll never forget, I was sitting in English class, and we were sitting there, and I looked, we looked down, and there was this real nice car down there. It was a Mercedes, and it was hooked up. Candy apple red, tan interior, and had gold rims on it. And so I think it had an impression on Dylan also. Guy turned around and said, I'm Sherman Smith, I'm the running back coach at Miami University. Yeah, I just knew he had been through a lot, that he was a tough guy. I knew that he was adopted and, you know, he wasn't.
wasn't looking for excuses not to succeed. He was looking for reasons to succeed. There was a something at the bottom. I mean, between just my interaction with him directly and then obviously my mom's interaction, I need to be around this type of person. Coach Smith was hard enough in love. He was just a gentleman, and uh, he was very attentive and respectful to me. They connected immediately. The first impression of Jim McCullough was just incredible intensity. Our running backs room, and I think it's because of Coach Smith, everyone became a fan. If anything was going on, you know, I would just go and talk to Coach Smith. What he's about rubs off on you. The line I would tell the players, I said, you know, you may not be looking for a father, but I'm going to treat you like you're my sons. Dylan is just one of those guys. I loved his attitude. He ran like his hair was on fire. He just ran through a hit for an extra seven. Dylan McCullough, where did he come from? I wanted people to respect, you know, my game and who I was. Take advantage of his opportunity. And yeah, that's what I did. After four years as a starter, Dylan set the all-time rushing record in school and conference history. He went undrafted in 1996, but the 23-year-old signed on as a free agent with the Cincinnati Bengals. I came in very upset for the whole lot of rules, you know, that I should have been drafted. I'm a, a good player and, that, you know, I have the ability to play in the front. Dylan made the most of his opportunity. Through three preseason games, he led the NFL in rushing. Then, on August 23rd, 1996. Back to pass, it's a screen for McCullough and the running room. And finally knocked down by Stephen Boyson. McCullough's down on the field, he's hurting. Dillon suffered multiple torn ligaments in his right knee. He would never play a regular season NFL game. By 1998, at 25 years old, Dillon was out of the NFL. And the real journey was just beginning. I moved to Columbus, Ohio. I was working in a residential treatment for, say, like a group home. I actually met my wife while doing that. I knew that he was adopted. When he told me, it was kind of like, oh, okay. I was surprised at first. Then I was like, okay. We never really talked about it outside of when we got pregnant with a little Dylan. My oldest was born at the, the hospital, and they started asking about family history. I'm like, man, I, I don't have no answers. Then I'm like, where did I come from? You, you just start, as I got older, I started having more questions. Like, where does this come from? We end up having a conversation about looking for my biological family. But there was no information available. Since 1984, by law, adoptees from Pennsylvania, like Dillon, had had their birth records sealed. Here's a starter, little Dillon's first haircut. Dillon's family continued to grow. What's up? Where did you? <laughs> by 2011, and at age 39, he was back in football and named running backs coach at Indiana University. Three years later, he received an internship at the Seattle Seahawks with the help of his old coach. That's a touchdown. We came out and did the internship, and I remember, you know, he's my guy. So I said, man, you got individual drills. You do that. That's your drill every day. And the guys loved it. They absolutely loved it. Man, I want to make sure I represent you on the air talking, you know, to the man that recruited me. And you know, for him to affirm, man, you're doing a good job. He made sure he shared that with people too, like, hey, and this, this guy a good coach. Programs across the country took notice, including the University of Southern California. And in the spring of 2017, 44-year-old Dylan McCullough became the Trojans running backs coach. 
today. And I have a day for us to take a step back. Y'all agree with that? Y'all cool with that standard? Let's go. At the same time, 2,600 miles away, something was happening in the state capital of Pennsylvania that would change Dylan's life forever. We are here simply to celebrate the passage of House Bill 162, but more importantly, to celebrate the age-old question for many of us of where do we come from? Who are we? After more than four decades, Dylan would finally have access to his birth record and an opportunity to discover his biological parents. My heart started beating a little bit, so I immediately got on the phone, tracked down a number, and called. I had no clue where it would lead at all. I mean, it could have been a pit of disaster. Man, it's unbelievable. When we return, Dylan McCullough goes in search of his biological parents and what he discovers, well, he can hardly believe. Little Caesars has done it again by giving you one large pizza piled high with five delicious meat toppings. Hot and ready every day between 4 and 8 p.m. for only nine bucks. You heard me right. Count them. One, two, three, four, five. Meat toppings, including pepperoni, sausage, bacon, beef, and ham. Order yours on our convenient mobile app. Or simply walk into Little Caesars and pick up your large, hot and ready five meat feast for just $9. Tonight, it's a pizza. <laughs> Use Old Spice. She knows best. Time. It shouldn't be measured by clocks. It should be measured by how long steak and lobster is back at Outback. Backed by popular demand, steak and lobster starting at $15.99. And time is limited. So hurry in today and try our everyday lunch combo starting at $7.99. Every time a Friday feels like a family reunion, a corona gets its line. Every time your favorite song is everyone's favorite song. Every time your work friends and your friend friends become friends. Every time it feels like you're the only two people in the room. And every time it's like you're the only people on earth, a corona gets its line. It's simple. People count on you, and you count on your truck. So we built you the most capable line of Ram trucks yet. The all-new Ram 1500 delivers best-in-class V8 towing. The Ram 2500 has best-in-class gas towing. And the Ram 3500 gives you best-in-class fifth wheel towing. That's why more people are switching to Ram than ever before. Now get an average $9,433 in total values on the all-new 2019 Ram 1500. From majestic fairways to challenging bunkers and spectacular greens to just about any hazard you might find, we'll keep you covered off the course. From cargo liners, bump step, floor liners, and more, nothing protects like WeatherTech. Order at WeatherTech.com. WeatherTech, made right in America. The round of 16 at the U.S. Open with the draw tightening up. Serena and the biggest names in tennis have to make it to the quarterfinals. The round of 16 begins today at 11 on ESPN. and more places can afford to dream gig. Comcast, building America's largest gig speed network. Show me golf stats. Get more PGA Tour Go with Xfinity X1. Get leaderboard updates. 
in-depth player profiles, and more. Experience the PGA Tour's FedEx Cup playoffs like never before with Xfinity. E60 is presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. For his entire life, Dylan McCullough, now 45 and an assistant coach for the Kansas City Chiefs, had no idea who his biological parents were. But in the spring of 2017, Pennsylvania changed its laws governing adoption records. He finally had his chance. Here again is Sarah Spain. Keep that thing tight. Here we go. Ball security all day. I see you. I see you. I see you. November 13th. It was a Monday. I'm out with the facility at USC. And I remember just saying to myself, I wonder what's going on with this adoption paperwork. But when I got home that night, going through the mail, and the paperwork was there that night. So I remember going over and looking, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, this really happened. This really came. I look on there, and it's basically what's called your original birth record. I looked on there and I see my name was John Kenneth Briggs and my mom's name was Carol Denise Briggs. You know, so that was, it was, it was like emotional. So what do you do with that info? I went on Facebook, just type the name and see what happened. There she was, where her, where the computer was and like pictures of me and my family were on this little desk back here. And I looked at her picture and I looked back mm -hmm. at mine and I said, yeah, okay, we got a shot here. You're like, wow, wow, here we go. So I sent her a Facebook message. I mean, Youngstown, I could, if she had other kids, I, know, I might know them. 
She said, no, I never had any other children. And she said, I never got married. I said, um, well, shoot, who's my dad? At that point, I was confident in the knowledge. This really is my son. So he asked, yeah, I got to tell him. There were probably only three people that I had ever said his father's name to in the context of my having a baby. I guess I got pretty emotional at that point. And uh, it was important for him to know. It was important for him to know who his dad was. And I said, well, your father's name is Sherman Smith. Your dad is a man named Sherman Smith. And when she said that, I mean, it was, I almost fell off, I almost like passed out. And uh, I could kind of hear him choke up a little. And he says, well, I've known Sherman my whole life. There were so many things going through my mind. It was candy apple red. It was a real nice car. It was the better. I just knew that he was adopted. God turned around and said, I'm Sherman Smith, I'm running back coach at Miami University. Well, I'm with you, man, I'm gonna take care of you. He looked well, come on. Where did he come from? He's my guy. He coached me. Guys loved him. I know him. I'm gonna treat you like you're my son. He's been my mentor for the last 28 years. I, it's like I couldn't even hear anything she was saying because I'm still processing your dad is, is a guy by the name of Sherman Smith. I knew exactly who, what. I'm like, this is unbelievable to me, you know? So then in the morning, I, I think I texted Carol and I said, can I tell my dad? And she said, yeah, you go ahead and tell him. So I texted him and I said, Coach, I need to talk to you about something that's important. 63-year-old Sherman Smith had just retired after 22 seasons of coaching in the NFL. He was married with two children and three grandchildren. What's up, Coach? He started the conversation off and said, uh, you know that I'm adopted. And I said, yeah. And he said, you know, I've started the process, you know, wanting to find my adopt my biological parents okay man that's great and, you know and hey I, you know i got my my birth certificate the other day. hey man i'm hey that's great news to hear man and, yeah my biological mom from young south hey man is that really so i'm getting excited for him you know this story's building up i found my biological mom and then he said he told me a biological mom's name and it was like oh okay and then he said and, uh he didn't have to take too much before that sunk in. He said, and I asked her who my biological father was, and she said, you. And boom, that's what, it's wow. And it's silent from right there. And then I swear, we still laugh about this now. He started talking incoherently. I couldn't even understand what he was saying. For him, he's a, he's a very articulate person. You can't, he don't mumble, you know, but he was, uh, uh, I couldn't understand what he was saying. He's like, man, she never told me this. He was, he said, I know her. He said, I do know Carol. Dylan knew that he had biological parents out there. Carol knew that she had put a son up for adoption. I didn't know, but I had a son out there. So this was like, you know, I'm glad I was sitting down when he told me. He asked me for my mom Carol's number. And obviously he spoke to her. After 45 years, this is probably not the icebreaker conversation that you want to have with the guy that you used to fool around with, and hey, we've got a 45-year-old son, too. And how are you? <laughs> I remember, you know, joking with her about, you know, asking her how things were going. You married, you have kids, all this stuff. She said, no, I'm not married, don't have any kids. And I said, laughed, well, you definitely have one. And we laughed about that. But other than that, we were just talking about life and, you know, growing up and, you know, just the process she went through and the decision she made to put Dylan up for adoption and, you know, but she thought that was what's, what was best for him. He was wonderful. He was wonderful. I told him that I was, you know, I've always wanted to know 
that Dylan was okay and that he was a good person. And he said, I can assure you that Dylan is that and then some. He said, you, you couldn't ask for a better person to be your son. A few hours later, he called. He said, I, uh, I got it. I got the story. He said, I, I heard it, but I just need to know for sure. I said, wait, let's get set up do a paternity test. On November 27, 2017, a paternity test concluded that Sherman Smith Dylan's coach and mentor for nearly three decades was his father. Two weeks later, Dylan met his birth mother for the first time. She came walking up and I was like, oh my goodness, just looking at her face like, wow. You know, I just felt like I was looking in the mirror like, man, this is unbelievable. We couldn't stop touching each other through the whole visit, you know, and then he ate dinner and then we talked and talked. Five days later, Dylan was outside Nashville to see his father. And he opened the door, and I never, I've never had anybody say this to me, is open his arms, and he said, my son, you know, for so many years that I was around him, you know, the embrace was, hey, coach, how you doing, hey, dude, you know, but this is, man, my son. <laughs> I said, I've never heard that before, you know, especially, you know, for somebody who, <clears throat> you know, of his stature and what he's about. If it never happened, say, say he never found his birth parents, that wouldn't make Dylan any less of a person or incomplete. No matter how it happened, we are family. We're family. On July 6th, Dylan was here in Youngstown, Ohio, where all of his family would be together for the first time. When the rain is flowing in Kansas City Chiefs hired Dillon as their running backs coach, the same position his father Sherman had held with the Seahawks, Oilers, and Titans. And then on June 23rd, Sherman joined Dillon and his family in Oxford, Ohio, where Dillon McCulloch II is now following the footsteps of his father and grandfather playing football at Miami of Ohio. And for more on the story, head over to ESPN.com for Sarah Spain's companion piece. Thanks for having joined us for this week's edition of E60. We're back next Sunday on ESPN2. More of the best stories in sports with Jeremy Schaaf. I'm Bob Lee. Stay tuned now for SportsCenter.